Our next talk is a new approach to impredicative polymorphism in the Glasgow Haskell compiler. This work is, has been developed by Alejandro Serrano, Jorian Hogg, Simon Peyton Jones, and Dimitris Vitignadas. Alejandro Serrano will be giving the presentation. Hi, I'm Alejandro. I'm going to talk to you about a bit how we brought impredicativity into GHC. But first of all, what is impredicativity? Take a function like map. It has two type arguments and it takes a function, a list and returns a list. Because this function is polymorphic, we can use map with a wide range of types. We can use map even and can get a function from list of ints to list of bools, or we can have map of greater than and then we have a list of ints to a list of functions. But if now we want to use map with this function, which takes an argument which itself has a polymorphic type, in many cases we cannot really use this. Polymorphic types, those types having with a for all, are often not first class in many programming languages. Impredicativity is exactly the feature that allows you to instantiate a type variable like a or b in map with a polymorphic type, a type which has a for all on front. Systemf, which is the basis for GHC core, is itself impredicative. You can always instantiate with a for all type, but you have to be very explicit about it. You need to annotate. In fact, in Systemf, you need to annotate every time you instantiate with a type application, like I'm doing here with add for all a h a. And you also have to annotate every time you generalize, every time you need to have a for all in a type with a big lambda, like I'm doing here in the big lambda for the first argument. So the problem actually is not in predicativity, but in predicative inference. We want to write something like here where we cons an identity function to IDs, which is itself a list of for all A, A to A's, and we want uh, the inference engine to be able to add anything we need. But there are several questions. First of all, how do we instantiate the cons? Henley Damas Milner, for example, which is one of the best known inference algorithms, does not allow polymorphic instantiation at all. The second question is how do we choose to generalize? How do we know that we have to have a big lambda excited at the point we need it and not somewhere else? There's been a lot of work about impredicative inference. There are so many related work. Here, I want to present Quick Look, which is a new idea in which what we do is we introduce a new Quick Look phase during instantiation, which discovers impredicativity as much as possible. And then the rest of the type checking just remind, remains as it was. Let me show you an example. For example, I have here cons ID IDs, where instead of using uh, ID directly, I'm, I'm putting this into a local binding, but here you can see all the types. If you do inference with Hindley Damas Miller, what will happen is that you instantiate the type of cons and sort of you're introducing cons applied to one type variable you don't know, I'm gonna call it alpha here, and then you have the argument ID and IDs. The type of the, the arguments are then alpha and list of alphas. The question now is what is alpha, of course, and if you have a declarative spec, maybe you guess the instantiation, or if you have a type inference engine, the type inference will do unification and try to figure this out. But the thing is no instantiation with for all types without for all type works. So this example is rejected by Hindley Damas Milner. How does it work with quick look? Well, you start with the same step, you instantiate the type of cons, and at this point, you have a quick look at the arguments. You try to get as many information about the impredicativity you need by looking and having a peek at the arguments. In this case, we're gonna learn nothing from the first argument IDs, and from the second arguments, we're gonna learn that alpha has to be exactly for all A, A to A. At this point, what we know is that the type of these arguments are not just any alpha, they are exactly for all a, a to A and list of for all a, a to A. And there is nothing else to guess and uh, type checking can succeed. 
Now, I've said that we learn nothing from ID, but from IDs, we learn that alpha must be for all a, a to a. So you might be wondering why, what's the difference with, between these two arguments? Let me try to explain this. Here are the types we are pushed, so the types we get from the instantiation, and the types that are uh, obtained from looking at the type of the variables. In the case of ID, the type which is pushed is this single type variable alpha, and the type uh, we get from the variable is for all a, a to a, and from IDs it's the same, but everything is wrapped in a, in a list constructor. So actually, in the case of IDs, we have only one possibility. In order for the list of alpha and the list of for all a, a to a to be equal, just one, one has to be, uh, alpha has to be for all a, a to a. Now for the second case, we actually have two possibilities. It could be that alpha is for all a to a, but we have another option. At this point, we could instantiate, so the for all a to a becomes beta to beta, and then we make alpha equal to this beta to beta. The difference here is that alpha in the second case is what we call guarded, which means it appears under a type construct. And the key idea is that the instantiation relation becomes simple equality when you have a type constructor on top. So in the second case, you have nothing to decide. There is only one choice, so you take it. If you have uh, a single type variable lying around, like in a type of IDs, you don't know what to do. So we just say, well, at this point, we learn nothing. And actually, it can be the case that quick look guesses no information. Let's, for example, cons ID with an empty list. In this list, we will instantiate the type of cons, have a quick look at the arguments, and we will learn nothing from ID and we will learn nothing from the empty list. So we need to fall back to monomorphic instantiation. And the result will be that the inferred type is the, more, the, the most usual list of tau to tau where these taus are monomorphic types. We can also get some other information into account. Imagine, for example, we have this call to single ID. Well, we have a pretty similar story with the arguments. The type of ID is going to be alpha when we push it. And then we have a for all a, a to a. So we have two choices here again. We can make alpha equal to for all a to a, or we could instantiate. So Q, quick look gives you no information here. But have a bet, if we have a better look, we can also take into consideration the type of the result. And in that case, we can play the same trick as we did for the cons of ID with IDs. The type we get pushed is for all a, a to a, that's from the annotation, and the type we get from the instantiation is list of alpha. So we can make alpha equal to for all a, a to a. So by knowing the expected result type, we can get even more imprecative information. And this will actually inform us to get a bidirectional type system instead of uh, a single directional one as, as, as Hindley Milner is, for example. But the question is when to stop quit looking. Up to now, we've only dealt with variables. So everything was one, uh, one application and this application had arguments, but those arguments were all variables. We can actually go deeper and inspect nested applications. And if you think, for example, into this call cons ID to cons ID IDs, in order for the topmost cons to be correctly instantiated, you need to go up to the IDs so that you learn that, well, this should have a type of list of for all A, A to A, and this will inform both cons. So you gain something by inspecting nested applications. But we do no more. We really want to keep this simple. We don't want to go into environmental changes, so we don't inspect lambdas, we don't inspect leds because this introduces new things into the environment. And we don't try to inspect things with multiple branches like ifs or pattern matching because it will imply that we need to not only uh, unify things in a simple way, we would also need to, to consider the case with these two branches don't have a, a similar type. So we just really want to keep it simple and we want we found that the nested application seems to be a sweet spot. So you really gain a lot of information by looking at nested applications. And for the rest of the cases, you well, you often get information pushed by the by directional uh, typing mechanism. So this is a sweet spot, as I was saying. So our goal actually has always been to have a predictable inference for which I mean a simple mental model that the developer can have 
of when things will succeed and also when things break where the annotation should be placed. We also want obvious programs to be typable without annotations. And of course, what obvious are is subjective. In the paper, we have a big list of examples which we need, should we think we sh should be typable without annotations. And many of the examples I've shown here are also typable without annotations. So we really want to push uh, for getting as much as in predictive information as we can so that developers don't have to annotate all the time. The other goal we had is to be a conservative extension of existing features. So we want this thing to be compatible with type classes, type families, everything which is already into GHC and also to be localized in a specification and implementation. Because as I was saying, we want to implement this in GHC without massive changes. Uh, so let me talk a bit more about the fact that Quick Look is very localized. And as I said, this only affects instantiation. The rest of the type checking has no changes. So we've integrated this into GHC, which has type classes, type families, data type promotion, levity polymorphism, you name it. And we were able to implement this and there is a merge request for doing so. And we only had to add 450 lines out of roughly 90,000 lines, which make up the type checker in GHC. So I think we succeeded in making this thing really localized. Of course, I encourage you to read the paper, there is more there. You have the full formalization. And actually we think it's the first time that bidirectional type inference and constraint had been uh, written down in a paper. This is what was uh, inside GHC, but there was no nothing written about how you integrate all of this together. And on top of that, we built quick look in predicativity. Of course, we have, uh, we talk about meta theoretical properties. Uh, also, we uh, talk about how we integrate quick look with visible type application. And the reason is that when, when quick look fails, the easiest way to override, the easiest way to tell the compiler what this instantiation should be is to use visible type application. So we think it's really important that these two things play together well. We also talk a bit about how qualified type and GDT is integrated with quick look and also lots of related work because as I shown at the beginning, a lot of people have been struggling with this problem and trying to solve it for a long time. In summary, quick look in predicativity is a simple approach to impredicative inference, which tries to be predictable, but yet type as many obvious programs as possible without annotation. And it's also a conservative extension to what it's already there and very localized in the specification and implementation. That's what all. I'd love to hear you any new ideas, any questions in the, in the ICFP channel for this. And thanks for watching. Thank you, Alejandro. If you are watching this talk live, please don't forget about the Q&A session that may be available in your time band.